I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest, I don't even remember how I found her. She's going to tell the story, but I love her. Her name is Lori Neighbor. She has a YouTube channel, and I really want you guys to subscribe because I love her her content and I love her recipes. And today she's gonna to be making her favorite one pot meal. She calls it Lori's lazy one pot meal with a chiliquiles roja sauce. And she actually is broadcasting where she lives in Mexico. I'm so excited to meet her for the first time. Please welcome Lori Neighbor. Thank you so much for doing this, Lori. Hi everybody. Welcome to my home. I always open up my YouTube videos with that so that everybody knows that I'm a, a conservative Christian. I'm a, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and I'm a pastor's wife. And the reason why I started doing these videos earlier this year is because I have a small Facebook support group for women that I know, well, that's how it started out, was with people that I know, and they asked me to make recipes. So I wanted to give credit where credit is due. So I was putting titles like Chef AJ, because I thought, you know, I want other people in the Christian community to find this, this type of diet lifestyle. And so, you know, they would rec people looking for Chef AJ might find my videos and maybe they would also follow this type of lifestyle, you know, because it's, let's see if I'm can get myself all nervous and jumbled up here. But well, anyway, don't, don't just a sec, don't be nervous because you are delightful as you are. You're beautiful. You do not look like a grandmother. You don't even look like you're even 40 yet. And I'm going to direct people to your YouTube channel. Hopefully they'll subscribe because I love what you named it. I'll never diet again. Yeah, I'll never diet again. That that is that's key. So one day, you know, and of course it'd be fun, shoot, if Chef AJ would find me. Maybe one day Chef AJ would find me and say, and Chef AJ found me and said hello. And then it's not even a year gone by and here I am on her show and I, I'm really, I feel unqualified. I'm not a chef. I'm a home cook, but I love to cook. So I have a chef uh, apron. <laughs> Wait, you are qualified because you've lost almost 60 pounds eating yeah. the way that I recommend. So that, that qualifies you right away for being a guest. Thank you. So part of my story uh, if you'd like to, I don't know which one you want to hear, how I got in Mexico or how you want, or you want to hear how I lost the weight, which do you want to hear? First? Well, uh, let's hear both, but let, let's hear about how you lost the weight first. Oh, before we do that, because I don't talk and cook well at the same time, we got to start the food. Otherwise I will forget. And then we won't have any food. So what, this is my favorite breakfast this is my favorite food right now. And I'm just one that's able to eat the same thing over and over again. It just makes it a lot easier for me. And with some of the health comp, complications that I've had. It's just easier to kind of stay with the same thing. It doesn't upset my stomach. So I already pre-put in my pot, my instant pot, which Chef AJ sold me, <laughs> about three, half a cup to three quarters of a cup of water. And then I'm going to layer it. Now I eat because people want to know what I eat in a day. So I'm going to kind of, that was my plan. I thought, well, I, I have all these props. I'll just kind of show you what I eat in a day. And so these are two big nice sized potatoes they're thin skinned so you don't have to peel them or anything like that and if you don't want to cut them because like chef aj hates to cut just throw them in the pot whole and cook them a little bit longer <laughs> but so i'm going to layer that and it's you don't have to weigh or measure anything but people want to know so i started like how much am i eating here so this i'm not as active as chef aj she eats a whole lot more potatoes than i do this is about a pound of potatoes at least a pound of potatoes. So there's my potatoes. Then this is Chef AJ style. You gotta have two pounds of non-starchy veggies. This I love. And everybody's gonna be different. Some people are gonna have, you know, like Chef AJ likes her Brussels sprouts and um, Dr. Esselstyn's wife, she likes kale and without, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their thing that they, their go-to non-starchy veggies and mine happens to be zucchini. So you can see what's going on here. I've already put my water on it. I love corn. So did you see it? Oh I my mean, God, beautiful. Cool. You know, you know I, have a, I have a saying, Lori, if you want to fit into your bikini, don't forget to eat zucchini. There you go. You know, it's full of water too. So it's really good for you. But, and I put a half a cup of corn because I like corn. 
I'm going to put it in my Instant Pot for two minutes. Now, you got to remember something, which none of you know because I haven't told you yet, is that I live a mile high. So my cooking method is going to be a little bit different than those of you that are on sea level. I've heard Chef AJ say she doesn't like to cook her zucchini in the Instant Pot because it gets all mushy. Well, for some reason, mine doesn't. And I think it's because I'm up at a higher altitude. And when I've been down at sea level and I've cooked on vacation while we were at the beach, things cooked a lot faster and I ended up with mushy rice. And so it's like the timing, the temp, the timing of it has to be less down at sea level. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into the Instant Pot. And it is on high. Now, if I was doing zucchini alone without potatoes, I could put it on zero, on low, and it would not come out mushy. So that just has to do with my fortune of being a mile high. Um, so sometimes people want to know, uh, well, they want to know how I lost the weight. So we'll start there because I could go all over the place. So how did I lose the weight? It's kind of a long story. I don't have a clock in front of me. So okay, you, you, might... you got an hour, so don't worry. But I got for ask. Do people okay. tell you you look like Naomi Watts, the actress? Because you, you know do... what? It, there is. There's someone. Her name is Chef AJ. You might know her. She's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you are adorable. I just, and I love your name because you make me think of Mr. Rogers. Won't you be my neighbor? I know. And we're friendly. And and in, in the Bible, it says that, that you're to love us. We're to love the neighbor, your neighbor. And I'm your neighbor. You get to love me. <laughs> but anyway. Um, my story is similar to yours in that I struggled with my weight all of my life. Um, there were some, you know, emotional things. My, my dad abandoned my family and I, when I was a little girl, so he wasn't there to tell me that I was, you know, a pretty little girl, that I was worthy of a good husband. He, he missed out on all those things. And, um, I just had a low self-esteem and I was always... I my first diet was when I was in the second grade. Can you believe that? I was in the second grade. And um, so I just threw half of my lunch away, which wasn't a, a horribly bad idea, but just the fact that I was considering do that, doing that in second grade is just kind of, you know, un unfortunate. But anyway, um, so I grew up not knowing how to control my weight. And I love to eat. And of course, I love to eat potatoes, but was told that they were fattening and that, that I shouldn't eat them. And it was what was in the potatoes that was fattening, not necessarily potatoes, because we know that potatoes don't make you fat. So um, as I grew up, I was just always struggling with my weight and um, didn't really know how to lose weight. When we were in our 20s, um, there was a, a crisis in our family where a family member had had a massive heart attack. And my husband and I, we were overweight and he had said that, um, you know, he wanted to get fit and thinking that would definitely be easier on our hearts. So we, we lost weight. We lost like 40, 50 pounds. He, I think he lost like 50 pounds. I lost 40 pounds. And how did we do that? We, I was <laughs> counting calories, every, weighing every single morsel. That's why I do not like to weigh. I do not like to measure but i do it for the people because they ask um i did not do that losing this weight so but back so for about almost seven eight years i was counting calories i had a computer program i was exercising like two hours a day um at, when we initially started i wanted to learn how to ride mountain bikes so we were mountain bike riding and we were living in redding california in northern california mountain bike country at the time so it was a lot of fun uh, riding around, but uh, I'll tell you after six or seven years of that and I turned 40, guess what? I was really sick and tired of counting my food and counting calories and measuring and I was hungry and I wasn't satiated and it was, I didn't want to do it anymore. I was tired of it. I don't, I don't want to count calories more. I don't want to track it. And when I was about 38, my health started taking a bit of a dive because you think about it. I was counting calories. I was doing weighing everything, but nobody told me how to eat for nutrition. So we were eating processed food. I didn't cook. 
I mean, the broccoli would go rotten in the refrigerator. <laughs> and then and my daughter's here with me, but uh, it was just, it, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good situation. Plus we were told eat high protein, you eat more protein, you're going to have, um, it'll make you not feel hungry. And so we were eating a high protein animal based diet and I was starting to get sick. And what ended up hap happening is I was told I had fibromyalgia and then I started getting, uh, I was, I was about 40. I started to realize that, um, I could change my diet and we started juicing and I switched over to the Mediterranean diet, but the Mediterranean diet has a lot of olive oil, olive oil. And we were getting great cheeses. I, I mastered my margarita pizza. My husband, you can't see it, unfortunately, because there's too much of a glare. My husband even built me a wood fired oven. I really got into cooking from scratch. We went unprocessed. And while everybody was going, the craze was, oh, you can, because they found, uh, I don't know, one of the diets that's um, meat based. Everybody was bragging about it. I'd been eating that way for a year and I wasn't getting better. And I was saying, wait a minute, but I've been eating that way and I, I still don't feel good. Um, and it was hard. I, I went to a couple of different doctors and was offered a Stanton drug because my cholesterol was up so high. And I was, I was feeling really, really bad. Plus my system was so messed up. Um, it's very common here in Mexico. People know that they need to deworm and uh, we don't talk about it in the United States, but, but here it's, it's very common practice that just like you deworm your pets, you deworm people. And so we learned about that, that you need to do that about every six months here in Mexico. It's probably good common practice everywhere, but people aren't are totally unaware of it in the United States. At least we were. Um, and so, um, so I was just convinced that I could find a cure. And I was looking and looking for ways to get better. And um, let me... I get, I'm, I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. That's okay. You, you, don't, don't be nervous. I mean, I don't want to tell you, don't, don't, I don't want to tell you not to feel what you're feeling, but what I'm trying to say is there's no need to be nervous because the people watching are, we're family, we're Zooming, Zoomunity, I call them a community on Zoom. So please. What's, what's crazy <laughs> is that I am more nervous with one person than a whole audience could be full. I, I actually, I sing. <laughs> I sing and lead worship and um, I'd rather have an audience full of thousands of people that I can see and it feels like an empty room than being with an audience of one. <laughs> well, I, so, I, I, I could leave and then you just finish no, the no, show. No, because I know nobody. No, Listen, no. Rita says, we love you already. Francie uh, says, don't be nervous, Lori. You're a rock star and you look gorgeous on camera. You really do. You look like a movie star. Uh, Christy says, we love you, Lori. So you couldn't have picked a nicer audience to, uh, thank you. <laughs> to, to, be, to be nervous in front of. Okay. Well, um, so let me go to, to the story. So I'm trying to get better and uh, I'm looking to doctors to help me. They're not really pointing me in the right direction I, I because I wasn't finding the answers. I wanted to cure myself naturally. So I had gotten to the place where I had brain fog so bad, I was driving down the road and I forgot what side of the road to drive on. It was bad. Uh, the integrative doctor that I found at the time told me that I had candida issues terribly, just really bad. And I had colitis, very, very, very bad case of colitis, which we know that the next step with colitis is colon cancer, which my grandmother passed away with. So I was just like, Lord, please help me. Show me how to heal myself. I believe in miracles. So if you want to heal me and give me a miracle, I'll take it. But if not, show me how to heal my body because I just believe that my body could heal itself. So I came across a naturopathic doctor online who is fruitarian and has herbs. And I was became a fruitarian. Now in the first week of eating raw fruit, the brain fog lifted and it's never come back again. That was pretty tremendous. And I tried eating raw fruitarian for, I don't know how long it was, at least one, one or two years. 
and I, I was not satiated and I was initially I lost weight but then because I wasn't satiated I gained weight why because I was eating avocado and I was eating coconut meat in my smoothies we have fresh coconuts we can get here so I was making I mean we even bought a professional blend tech um, I'm missing some teeth so it's easier for me to have things that are foods that are soft and of course, smoothies were great, but you can imagine all the calories that I was taking in by drinking smoothies. So I was drinking, and I lived on watermelon water. I loved it, which is great for detoxing, but um, a lot of calories in watermelon water. Um, and well, I wasn't getting better and I gained even more weight. So, so then what? I was kind of like, I'm sure that this can work, but I just couldn't stick with it because I wasn't satiated. So I had a friend at church that came up to me and she, well, first of all, <laughs> I had a friend that took a picture of me sitting down and I, and I saw the picture and I was mortified because I was so heavy. I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm not hiding behind my clothes like I thought I was. And so uh, a friend from church came up to me probably in November of uh, 2018 and, and she could size me up. She could tell I was about the same size as her. And she says, hey, this next year, I wanna lose 50 pounds. You wanna lose, you, you know, we can be accountable. Yeah, but, but she was gonna do it her, her way and I wanted to do it through Tarion. So I started out the end of December of 2018 and I was doing the fruitarian thing the, through January. I lost probably a little bit of weight, but then, you know, what came across my screen when I was looking at YouTube, because I like to watch YouTube videos to encourage me, was uh, information about the blue zones. And so that was how I discovered watching the blue, blue zone videos. Doctor, I heard about Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Ornish and I'm, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They, they reversed heart disease. They, they, they're the doctors credited to help President Clinton reverse his heart disease. And so it caught my attention that this isn't just some gimmick, that it, this is something real. And then I saw Dr. McDougall, because they would have the forums, you know, sit down at the forums. And her Dr. McDougall, it's a starch-based diet that we need. And I was just like, Hey, I'm still fruitarian. I'm like, no, he's all wrong. It's fruitarian. That's the diet. The raw fruitarian is what we need. And I didn't listen to him because it was so foreign. And here, Dr. McDougall used to do Christian programs on health. It was wonderful. I'm thinking, why didn't more people catch on to that lifestyle? Because it's a biblical lifestyle. It's it's what the way that we eat now, the way that we're eating now. So anyway i i thought well i started looking at these people in these blue zones they're living to be over 100 years old that must be good for me and then there is that one group in loma linda the seventh day adventist they're one of the blue zones they're living the long the longest and uh, of all the people around the world so I thought, well, I'm going to try adding beans back into my diet and started adding back some cooked foods and then learned to back off some on the oils and was just was looking and I didn't lose any weight. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So initially, the earlier last year, I didn't, I didn't lose any weight that first that month that I was eating the blue zone style didn't lose anything. And then uh, I heard about it, a couple that were doing raw, and they ate nothing until four intermittent fasting. I was introduced to intermittent fasting and that was pretty cool. The, re the reason why I liked it, is, especially for a short period of time, is because intermittent fasting broke the, the addiction of, you know, you want to eat after six o'clock. And, and if you eat after six, it's really, it's really the worst time to eat. Um, I made a video about how to gain weight because it was a satire, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to gain weight just go ahead and eat after six <laughs> it's just it's a guarantee you're going to gain weight um and i so 
sorry, got to take a deep breath here. I know why is because I don't see your eyes. <laughs> hey, do, do, do you have a cousin named Karen King? No. Oh, oh. Karen, yes, I do. Hi, Karen. What is she saying? I'm crazy. She said she oh, she said the nice things that you're doing great. I, I, I so but so she, she, she's really your cousin. She said you're doing yeah. great, cuz so don't be nervous. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for watching, Karen. <laughs> I would not embarrass anybody. <laughs> anyway, um, so I did I did nothing till four and raw, and I did, and I was listening yesterday, and it's true. I had a ton of energy because I was. I would be usually at four o'clock is my nap time. <laughs> it's hilarious that I have to take it. No, I, I don't always take a nap, but I mean, it's like the four o'clock slump. I think it's because we've eaten some cooked food and your body's trying to digest, you know, it's trying to digest what you, you ate. And that's why we get, we get sleepy. I think that's pretty obvious, but, um, so did nothing till four for a little while. And then one day I'm watching more videos and come across the screen, this gal with Dr. Esselstyn, and she's about, well, I think you're about the same height as I am. Actually, she's got dark hair. She's really skinny. And I'm like, this gal, she's got it all put together. I am totally intimidated by that. So she could not relate to me. That's, that was my first impression of Chef AJ. <laughs> oh, how wrong I was, right? I was so wrong. You can totally relate to me. And so I one day decided I was going to listen to Chef AJ. And she convinced me to try Dr. McDougall's starch-based diet. But I had to try it Chef AJ style. That's what I call Chef AJ style. Where she was, was like, you eat two pounds of non-starchy veggies first. And she's like, I guarantee you're going you're gonna to lose weight. And I'm like, cool, because I'm, I'm going to try this. And I'll tell you. I'll, I'll never diet again because it's fabulous. And it's true. I, I, I bought your books and I have a fly. Go away. <laughs> I bought your books I, on audio because I'm not, uh, I get distracted easily. So I have to listen to audio books. And um, so I listen to Chef AJ coaching me and telling me, you know, what I need to know. And it works, people. And not only does it work, to slim and trim you down, because look at, I mean, <laughs> woo, you are saturated, and it, it cures, what did it cure for me? It cured the colitis, cured the candida issues. I even had a toenail, my big toe, I did a video on it where I posted a picture of it. It was growing out, you know, because your toenails show your fungal issues. And it grew, I had a bow line across my big toe grew out since I started eating potatoes. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> it's amazing what it, what it does. Yeah, it's, it's really great. It's really great. So I love eating raw too, but nothing is quite as saturating as a really good potato. And I love it that it's a whole food. And being that these aren't these interesting times that we're living in right now. And I loved it one day when I was, I think it was after quarantine started and you said, I made, a, I've been fasting news for a year. And I thought, okay, it's going to influence me again. Of course, I haven't quite done that, but I backed off a lot on the news. It really, it really caught me off guard what was going on because it made, well, I don't know if it's, I've had, I'm at liberty to say, but it made it. Yeah, you know that sound it made it seem like um it was something so totally different and and foreign and that nobody knew anything about but it's a it's a virus and viruses are viruses <laughs> so we can detox viruses out and if we eat healthy which i was well that is my own hair attached to me <laughs> if we are eating well which you know, zinc is one of the things that's really touted as very helpful. Um, we're eating zinc in our whole in our whole food, and um, so that is my story of how I slimmed down and lost fifty eight pounds last year. It was a process, and I'll never go back 
Right. Well, that's, you can't because your YouTube channel is says that's the name of it. So you have to, you have to do that. And people can go to the channel and see, do you have before yeah. pictures either with you right now or on your YouTube channel? So people can believe it's that on you- the YouTube channel. Yeah, so definitely on the YouTube channel. But yeah, I don't, I was thinking because everything's digital. Everything's digital. So 58 pounds gone. Ain't, it ain't coming back. You can just stay gone. Uh, and now I'm, I'm celebrating a year. That's amazing. That's wonderful. Cause so many people don't make it a year, Laura. Oh, it's too bad. So let me see. You know what I didn't make for you, which I forgot I was supposed to tell for you. Was yeah, you got to make, you've got to make the chili quiles roja sauce. There's yeah. still time. Better, don't worry. Yeah, we better do that. So uh, what we're going to need is, you know, get a, get a white potato, or potato. I was afraid this would happen. Sweetheart, a package would arrive. <laughs> That's okay. This is real life. This is a live show. So yes. anything can happen. But we still, I still want to know, Lori, how long have you lived in Mexico and where did you live before that? I was born and raised in Redding, California, two hours north of Sacramento, if you're driving. And well, we've lived in different states as we were pastoring or youth pastoring. We lived in Kansas and Colorado and Southern California. And, um, but we came to Mexico in 2004 came down to learn Spanish in the Guadalajara area, and we're still here. Wow, still that here. Is, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, how far are you from Tecate? Because when I do go to Mexico, that's where I teach is Rancho La Puerta. Far, far away. Aww. Really far. Yeah. Because you, you think, you know where the Baja Arm is? Well, we're down still south and inland from there. So it's very, very far away. Um, we're about you do, any te- do you teach any cooking in Mexico? Because I know that, you know, it's funny because when I go there, you know what they call uh, McDonald's in Mexico? McDonald's. The, the American <laughs> Embassy. They call it the American oh. Embassy. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. They call it McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let me do this so that it's cooking as it takes 10 minutes to cook it. We're, we're going to use a white, a white, what do I call it? Potato, a white onion and if you're going to make one batch you're just going to have you just need a small one you know so about that about that big and i went ahead and pre-cut so i'm not making a bunch of noise and i didn't want to pour that in there anyway i was going to put it in here you know what? i didn't sleep well last night i was telling my friends pray for me that i could have my wits about me and not break or drop anything okay so i'm going to use the, the little bullet Yep, neutral bullet. This is probably enough for two. You're gonna use a little clove of garlic. You're gonna use two little Roma tomatoes. And here's something that not everybody will wanna do, but I do it. Uh, I highly recommend using gloves because if you get chilies on you or in your eye, it doesn't feel too good. So since we're in, we've been in quarantine, I have these gloves. So I, I repurpose them for helping me take the little seeds out of chili. This is a guajillo chili. chili. Can you see that? Guajillo. Uh-huh. And sometimes they're called mirasol. And what, you gotta take the seed out of it. So you break it open. I don't know if you can see this or not. You break it open and you take the little seeds out of there because that's going to make it spicier. And you put that in your, the chili pepper then in your carafe. And these are arbol chilies. This makes it really spicy. So if you do not like spicy stuff, don't use this. But if you do, and you want to learn how to speak Spanish quickly, use at least two of them. <laughs> That's funny. So Lori, on the show Friday, I had Chef Reina from broadcasting from Rancho La Puerta. Oh, okay. and, and they have the most amazing salsas there. Do you do you know the one that I'm talking about? That's it's more like a sauce. It's brown. It, it's not the red or it's not mole. the green. You like mole? It's it's not mole. It's just it, I don't know what it is, but it's like the most delicious sauce. And I I've tried to make it myself, and it never comes out. She's given me the recipe from Rancho La Puerta. I'm going to give you the recipe and see if you can perfect it because she says the difference is is the chilies are better there than the ones that I can get here. 
maybe. Is it, a, is it a raw salsa or is it a cooked salsa? I think you cook the peppers and the onions and the garlic and then you blend Probably it. With this roast, the roasting it is the only thing that I could think right. of. Boy, but that it, would burn, it's but. not a real attractive color. It's like a brown, but it's, yeah. it's the most delicious thing I've ever had. And when I'm at Rancho, I put it on everything from the vegetables to the potatoes to the rice. And I wish somebody would sell it. They do sell it at the Latino markets here, but then of course it has oil, sugar, and salt. Oh, well, yeah. Do they, um, do they put it, is it for tacos? See, because they have it's, different, it's, they have salsas for different, um, different food items. So, and I went ahead and did this, did this here. So you're going to use a cup. Well, I think I gave you the recipe for the chilaquila sauce. Anyway, I went ahead and for time's sake, blended it up, pre-blended it up here so that I don't make a lot of noise and put it in my, my saucepan and we're going to cook it for just 10 minutes. So you can see that after it's pureed, just makes a red sauce. There's a question on poblanos and- Poblanos, uh, yeah, those are good. They stuck those and I can't, what do they call them? Probably just call them stuff. Chile, chile relleno? Is it? Yeah, chile, something like that. Rainy yeah. says, what do you do with poblanos if you're whole food plant-based? So you would stuff a poblano. I, I have, I've only done it once. That was before I was even really cooking. Um, it's kind of, that dish is a specialty dish from um, Puebla that, you know, each, each zone or state, they kind of have their state food, uh, like mole. Mole is from Puebla, um, which is another state that I'm not in. We're in the state of Jalisco. And they, they stuff it, they even put, use um, pomegranates in that, but I've never made it other than that. One time I think we were doing, it was more, I was helping the, the family clean the peppers and they were like telling me, don't touch my eyes <laughs> afterwards because it would burn. Leah was uh, saying she once touched a pepper and then took her contacts out and that was very painful. Yeah, that would be bad. That's not fun. You know, I have to watch it because sometimes I'm making the sauce in the evening and then I go to bed <laughs> and take my makeup off. Not, not pretty to have bur go to bed with burning eyes. <laughs> you think that's funny, huh? My daughter thinks that's funny. How old is oh, your you daughter? Huh? How old is your daughter? She's 11. You want to come, come say hi? She's just hanging out. Hi. Oh, she's adorable. Does she eat plants as well? Of course. <laughs> she eats plants, but she still is a, she's Mexican. Not, she's, <laughs> oh yeah, she's Mexican, she says. So meaning that she's not completely 100% whole foods plant-based. That's okay. Something. Well, she's adorable. Do you have other children? I do. She has two big brothers that are big. <laughs> yeah, they're in their late 20s. Wow. Do you guys have any pets? We do. So tell her about our pets. We have two little ones and two big ones. That's great. Are We're you going to start your own YouTube channel? Yes. Yeah. I already started. Yeah, we actually have one. Oh, good. Well, then you can be a guest. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. I'm actually having some kids on, on, uh, I believe it's Halloween there. There's a kids with a vegan YouTube channel. So I'm going to have some kids oh, on oh. soon. Well, this is our, our other hobby. Well, we don't want to say what it is because we haven't, we haven't told everybody what it is yet, but it, it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to tell everybody else what our, what our new hobby is until we make that announcement yet. It's still to come. Oh, you know what? I forgot that uh, we need a, a cup of water. We need a cup of water to that chilaquila sauce. Okay, I'm fumbling around here. <laughs> it smells so good. Yeah, it smells good, she says. Um, let's see, I told you how we met, sort of. Told you how I lost the weight. What else do we wanna cover? What Do you wanna know what else I eat in a day? I would love to know what you eat in a day. Okay, so like in the mornings, I'll get, I have to have my tea and I like to have an herbal tea. Here's, I'm trying to finish here. I use, um, I, just as a prop, um, some teas from Star West Botanicals. I'm not selling anything. That's just happens to be what I use. I try to get something that's going to be good for filtering my kidneys um, because keeping everything flushed out is good for us. Also, there's a lot of sinus problems here in this area where we live. So I 
use a tea called memory tea and that helps keep your sinuses clean out when you're having problems with the allergies, the, the pollen and stuff like that here in the area. Um, and then about between 11 and one o'clock is when I like to eat my breakfast. And my very favorite is chilaquiles and I, and I mix it. Well, well, here's, here's my totopos is what they're called in Spanish. I just take tortillas because they're easy to get here. And I put them on the silicone, you know, cut them up, put them on the silicone tray and I bake them. I've done a video on that. Um, I'm really excited because my husband just asked me last week, I believe, um, if I would make him totopos and try to put some salt on it. I know he's, you know, it's, it's a work in progress with, with family. Um, and so I'm really thrilled because he was eating the kind of, of tortilla chips that have oil and they're not good for you. But he loves the chilaquile sauce that I'm making. And they, they were, he and my daughter eat it all the time. Sometimes they eat it for dinner. That's because they just love it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was just able to, for someone else that might be transitioning, I just took my pastry brush and I put a little bit of water on them. And then I just lightly put some sea salt on it for them. I don't like to eat them this way. I just like them plain, but it's, it's a step in the right direction, eliminating the oil. So then I would just take my, my um, corn chips and I would put the red sauce over it. But I don't know if, if it's helpful or not. We know that the less processed food is, the more calorie dense the food is and we will get fuller. And so I was trying to cut back on my tortilla chips because I still want to lose a little bit of weight. And I just, well, this is why I say it's kind of lazy. This is what I did. Well, let's get this open. I didn't want to make noise, but I'm going to quick release this. And I use this to even push the button down to make it go faster. <laughs> it's the end to a, it's a beater. To a electric beater. So I'll let that out so that it'll go faster. But I, I, I kept thinking, how am I going to do this and not make a bunch of noise? But, so we'll just let, let that out. Is that, is that a six quart or an eight quart instant pot? I, well, it's a bigger one. It's not the smaller one. I think it's a six. I wish it was, were bigger. Uh, there's a question from Gina about your exercise. Did you have to exercise to lose this weight? Do you oh, exercise now? Good question. Good question. You know what? I worked up because I, I had health. I, I'm still uh, reversing some damage. I have some health issues, so I get fatigued very easily. So I worked up, I started with barely five minutes of exercise. And that was, I used the Concept2 rower and worked my way up to 30 minutes of exercise. And that's between the Concept2 rower and I had my husband get me a bike stand for my mountain bike so that I wasn't out uh, falling and hurting myself <laughs> on the cobblestones. We have cobblestone roads here. So it's, it's stationary, but I can get that position, you know, I can ride the, the mountain bike. And I, so I worked up to 30 minutes of exercise. Uh, six days a week was too much for me. It made, I, I was too, it made me too tired. So I, um, five days a week is good. And I was so excited, you know, at the earlier this year, I'm like, I'm going to lose the last 20 pounds. And I was doing a bunch of videos and I was really going for it. And then my two, I have two guard dogs that were fighting and I had just come back from a walk and they dislocated my knee. They dislocated my knee. And so uh, I had surgeons tell me, you're gonna have to have surgery. It was a partially torn um, meniscus and ACL. And so I am still not, I could be doing more exercise, but I'm still not exercising as much as I, probably need to be doing right now. But when I do exercise, I like to exercise for 30 minutes a day. And that, that helps a lot. So now this pop down. 
Yeah. So Lori, Barbara wants to know how much weight did you, like, what was the time frame? Did it take you the whole year to lose 59 pounds? How long did it take? It was roughly between eight and nine months. Great. Roughly eight to nine months. I, I misplaced one of my sharks. Huh? Sorry, I was trying to have everything out. I, I got too excited and I didn't go to sleep on time. So, yeah. All right. So here's my food. That is. That looks delicious. But you can tell that the zucchini is not overcooked. Is what I is what you to see. It's not mushy. Can you see that? That's perfect. Also, I think it helped that you didn't cut it small. Oh. Well, that's true. That's true. So, you know, if I was going to do to <laughs> totopos or the, the the corn chips, then I would put, throw that in there. But I'm kind of, you know, I'm trying to still slim down, so I'm going to keep my my corn chips out of the equation. And then, perfect timing. There's my here's my chilaquile sauce. That's ready. Well, I shouldn't do that. I don't know if you can see it, but this is so oil and salt free, nice and spicy. It's so hot you can't see. So then I'll just put, <clears throat> it's spicy enough it might make me cough. Maybe two cups, just as much as you want. Flavor it with that. Yummy. And when I start eating, it would be between 11 and one o'clock. I'll just help myself and just, I eat this all by myself. That looks amazing. You know, I, it's so good. Yeah, my, my little grandson, he's four, he likes to eat it too. That made me cough, <coughs> it's spicy. Yeah, those chilies are powerful. Hey, where, do you, where do you shop in Mexico, mostly? <coughs> There's a, boy, that chili got me right in the throat. Uh-oh. There's a mom and pop <laughs> store called Super Lake. So if there's any viewers from the Lakeside area that are watching, yeah, I pick, we pick up our fresh produce at Super Lake. You can get these little zucchinis, but it got me. <coughs> really? It's a chili. <coughs> it's not good. Um, Super Lake carries these smaller zucchinis at Walmart. You can get them a little bit bigger. <coughs> uh, I think Kayla's going to have to take over. <laughs> that's okay. Well, she can finish the show if she has to. Are you able to get the Japanese sweet potatoes or the Hannah Yams in Mexico? No. No, I can't. Have you ever tasted we them? To... No. No. Oh, boy. I... You, well, when you do, your life is going to change forever. I promise you. But how can I get it? So that's, that's the other thing is that some things that, you know, other, other chefs or, or yourself talk about, I can't get like the balsamic vinegars and someone gifted me some, they had ordered some and brought it down. So I got to taste like the pear the, or some white pear vinegar. It was so good, but I can't, um, it's not something that I can get on a regular basis. So so I try to teach people here what they can do, where they can get things, where they can find things. We also pick, you know, you can get these types of potatoes at um, any any of the little mom and pop places, but we also get them at, at Costco. We have Costco in Guadalajara, so we go there. Um, so after I eat that food, then I like to have my oats, my soaked oats. So I have my props over here. Can you still hear me okay? Yeah. And in my soaked oats, I use a little bit of vanilla probably. Oh, boy, the ants found that. Oh. The, ants, the ants found my uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup. Oh, honey. When's the okay. last time you were, well, Laurie, when's the last time you were in the United States? Oh, boy. Yeah, I think when my mother passed away in 2016. Yeah, so that's which, which you know what my um, my my dad passed away 
in early April and he was, um, he, he, he had terrible coronary heart disease, but he was, but he also contacted COVID. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm but, so sorry. Yeah. But I tried to, um, uh, <clears throat> try to influence and he would tease me. He said, I don't know you want me to become a vegan, but he was raised on a dairy farm. He just, he had to have ice cream every night. And um, yeah, and I, I couldn't convince him. So I'm just hoping that by sharing my story and I can help other people because this does, this is really real. It's not um, a hoax that eating this way, it's not a scam. It's, it's real. So, so in my oats, which I have ants, on my maple syrup. <laughs> maple syrup is my uh, sugar of choice. There's another. So I like it. We get this at cost. It's a Kirkland. Um, we do get this. Um, it's not the fakey one. It's not a fakey one, right? So I use a half a cup of coke. Of, let's see if I can just throw things around. I'll be like, you know, Julia Childs in one of the Saturday Night Live when she's <laughs> throwing everything all around. But a uh, half a cup of oats. Is what I eat. I use a teaspoon of real Mexican vanilla. Mexican vanilla is so much better. <laughs> yeah. I use a teaspoon of uh, turmeric, cucurma, which is the world's greatest natural anti-inflammatory, about an eighth of a teaspoon of um, yeah, real cinnamon. <clears throat> and I use a cup of berries, of mixed dark berries. That's nerve food. And I put that in my cereal. It's probably better if I don't cook it, but sometimes I do. And then I, like I was listening to you guys yesterday, it was like, it does upset my stomach a little bit to mix the fresh fruit with the, with the cooked oats, but it's good. <laughs> Tastes good. And then I use seed cycling for balancing my hormones. And I use my tablespoon of <coughs> excuse me depending on the time of the month the first two weeks you use seeds one which is flax seed and pumpkin seed you use that for two weeks and then after that you the second two weeks of the month you use sesame and sunflower seeds and if you're still cycling then you have to figure out um, how to use that but I use and I notice the difference with my energy when I do so and I don't eat more than that also once a week I have a Brazil nut. I am one that can stop with one. <laughs> so I use one Brazil nut. I don't take supplements. I don't know if this is considered a supplement or not, but I will eat because it's a whole food. Uh, kelp, two kelp capsules, you know, whole food twice a week. I try to spread it out. And I like to put this cranberry balsamic vinegar in my water. I drink a quart of water a day. So I put a tablespoon of this type, uh, this brand of cranberry balsamic vinegar because that's what we found that's good and we have access to here in Mexico. I also wanted to mention that for some of the people that this lifestyle is different and maybe they're wanting to switch out meat but they don't know how to make their food taste good you can make some really yummy soups by throwing lots of veggies in the in the pot, add some water. But bay leaf really makes things kind of have a meaty type flavor. It gives a real rich flavor to, don't you, don't you, do you use bay leaf? Definitely I, I, in my split pea soup and in other recipes as well. But to me, it just makes it feel like you have some meat. Uh, some meat or something in there. It just, it tastes really good. I really enjoy it. Yeah. So Lori, and people are saying they love your channel, but you haven't made a video in three months. What's going on? Uh, well, like I said, I think the quarantine really threw me off. <coughs> um, I, I intended to make videos, more videos through quarantine. I was really distra distracted because I didn't understand what was going on in the world because everything was changing and it was upsetting to me. And that's why I said, I really, really appreciated that you had said to just turn off, turn off the news. So it's almost like if you don't know what's going on, your life is still normal and peaceful and wonderful. And that's kind of um, what I needed to do was just take a, 
take a break from all that was happening because it was happening so quickly. And um, I really uh, was looking at the, the Bible and seeing what's going on. All this stuff is happening. All this chaos is happening. But I had to, I mean, this is the spiritual side of me. So I had to realize that the Jesus said these things were going to happen. And so mm, we're just being prepared. I, I want to be, my one thing my dad had always loved to talk about was that Jesus was going to come back soon. And we could see because there were so many things happening. He even talked about the famines that were taking place because locusts were eating up the crops over on the other side of the world. We've heard some of that in the news even since he's passed away. So I just take those things very seriously into heart. And so um, even though I didn't change what I'm eating other than I did eat some nice, remember I told you I could tell you how to gain weight. Yeah. <laughs> it got, it gets really hot here before the rainy season in June the end of May and I was making nice cream and I, I, I learned how to make Snickers nice cream and it has a little bit of uh, peanut butter in it and, and and that's not a good thing and I and I let myself eat after six o'clock so I gained a little bit of weight that I'm gonna I'm gonna get it off it's I can get it off that's the great thing but I have to cut those that that type of nuts out the seeds are okay I still lost weight eating, doing the seed cycling to balance the hormones, but, but the peanut butter boy. Where, know, did, where did you learn about seed cycling? That's not a concept I'm familiar with. I don't, I don't remember. I happened to see it on a video, I guess. I was looking for something natural to balance out my hormones. It's Chinese medicine. Well, that'd be something I'd be love to have the a guest talk about. Before yeah. I ask you the next question. Got to thank Diane for the super chat donation. He said today's guest is very delightful. So thank you so much for that. And we have a great question from Leah who says, did your family and husband follow you along each step of your journey? They followed me because I was in their life, but did they practice exactly what I was doing? No. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying it's, it's a process. Um, you know, I was reflecting, I think it might have even been yesterday that came up on my timeline from back in 2011. It said that my husband had us watch and it was one of, it wasn't Forks Over Knives, it was another one. And it had to do with the, it was one of those documentaries about the vaccines and hormones and the stuff that's in the meat. And I can't remember which documentary it was, <clears throat> but it, you know, that he, he took the initiative to bring those things to our attention. He had our family watch it. Um, but there's some things, changes that he's made and he's, he's willing to make some changes, but he's not, I don't know that he's ever going to fully go whole foods plant-based like I am just because number one, he hasn't had the health challenges that I've had. And this has been great for me in this stage of my life. And I, I can't recommend it higher to others to avoid having some of the health challenges that, that I've had. So unfortunately, fatigue is still one of those things that I, that I struggle with. And, um, <clears throat> and mostly it's because I don't sleep and I'm not sleeping because my nerves, uh, they, I guess the, way, the easiest way to explain it is they flare up with weather changes. And we have a lot of weather changes here, in, <laughs> here where we live at this uh, altitude. So it's, it's worse this time of year than around Christmas time and the first of the year. I can sleep a lot better, but so when the storms come in at, in the evenings and really they cause your nerves to expand or something. And that it just keeps me awake. My nerves are spasming and stuff like that. So oh. that's one of the reasons why I'm tired, why I get tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, do you have anybody that, that either visits you or sends you mail regularly from the United States? I don't recommend it. We do have people that will come in to visit us, but uh, it's, it's a questionable thing whether it'll get through customs. We are now kind of seeing more things being able to come through uh, on Amazon. Uh, I ordered some towels from a cousin of ours that uh, created a sim simple sarong is the name of her towel that has little buttons on it and for Kaylee and I and they still haven't gotten here so 
that was back four months ago. Okay. The reason I asked is every guest on the show that lives in the United States gets two free samples of California balsamic, but uh, they have to live in the United States. So if you ever visit or have somebody that's going to visit you, let me know the offer will stand because I'd love okay. to get you some of those flavors. And Thank gosh, I'd, I'd love to get you those uh, Japanese sweet potatoes. When I go to Rancho, I bring them in. They allow me to bring them in and hopefully they have now started planting them at Rancho La Puerta. Yeah, you can, that's, that's a great idea. You can walk things and you can bring things in on the airplane, but it's kind of finding, you know, finding that mule that can take things back and forth for you. Otherwise it may not make it here. So, I mean, I appreciate it, but yeah. So I, I Googled seed cycling and that really is a thing. So I'm going to look into is having an expert talk about it. Dina says, how many seeds do you eat in a day, Lori? And do you eat any other nuts other than the once a month Brazil nut? Okay, no, not normally. Uh, I, I would only eat this once a week. I eat it on Wednesday. And the seeds, I grind them myself because they go bad quickly. But like, so you get your flax seed, you keep them in the refrigerator or your freezer, and then you grind them up in your little coffee grinder or your Nutribullet. And I just <clears throat> keep them separate. So here's my pumpkin seeds. So I grind up the seeds by myself. And I'm using a tablespoon of each the two sets of seeds, depending on which, if it's the first of the month or the last of the month. <clears throat> Glad I don't have to worry about the month anymore. <laughs> well, I, it's, you know what, it's good for everybody at all ages, even men. And if you're post menopause, well, just do it the first two weeks of the month and the last two weeks of the month. Christy wants to know if you have a garden and do you uh, have any potatoes growing? I do have a garden since quarantine and because we don't know what's happening in this world. We did uh, plant a garden. I planted some Roma tomatoes, which we've been harvesting some of those and zucchini, which I need to now probably, I don't know why here my, they kind of, they start producing and they kind of, they get buggy or something. They die out and you have to start it all over again. And I did plant sweet potatoes. We have a sweet potato, but I don't know what it's called. But there's, it seems like Mexico, we have, we do have yams and then we have another type of sweet potato that's bigger. Um, it's kind of purpley on the outside, but inside it's orange. I don't know what it's called. It sounds so delicious. It I sounds planted bad. for those. Those are growing in the garden. I guess they're gonna go like crazy. So that's pretty exciting. I love Mexico. You can't see my surroundings, but every time I go, I buy all those, you know, the beautiful, you know, all the, the, the beautiful art they have, not, not art yeah. for the wall, but you know, whether it's a Kleenex box or a dish, I just, I love Mexico. But I know that the dish, you know, a lot of that stuff comes from Tonala, which is not, which is a little suburb of Guadalajara. And then they ship it out all over Mexico. So it comes, it comes from not too far from me. Nice. So are you a little bit less nervous now? We could start again. We could just start right now. Now that it's all over with. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. That's I'm it. The fine. only time I really ever got nervous was when I spoke at Dr. <laughs> McDougall. Otherwise, it's just business as usual, but I get it. But thank you. You've been a delightful guest and you, you're helping so many people with your channel. I hope you'll start making more regular videos. I've posted the link several times if people want to subscribe or follow you on YouTube or check out some of your videos because they, they really didn't see the before picture and then they could see you really did lose 50. I'd like you to lose one more pound though. You know why I want you to lose one more pound? Because 60 sounds better than 59. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I need to lose two. You know what? Maybe I can pull up a picture here. Hang on a second. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, if it'll show up on digital, I'll stick it. I probably should have a picture we can use. That would be great. And guys, while she's looking for the picture, I want to tell you, we're going to have a really fun show tomorrow. I know some of you are single. We know that because so many of you have written mm -hmm. me to fix you up like I've done with some of the other viewers with some of the doctors even. And tomorrow we're having Corinne Charbonneau on and she runs a vegan matchmaking service. And she's going to talk about how to successfully date during a pandemic. So I think you're really going to want to watch that one because that's going to be really fun. Okay. Let's see if you can see this. Sorry, this is kind of hokey. Can you make it out? Yeah. You were, you were a lot larger. You were. I was a, a little bit chunky and I would try to hide behind my purse, but I didn't quite work. <laughs> well, no. 
I think you needed a bigger purse then back then. So, <laughs> yeah, yep. That well, I, I I hope you feel as good as you look. Thank you. I do. I feel so much better. It's wonderful. I highly recommend it. I especially recommend Chef AJ Style. Love Dr. McDougal. In fact, this breakfast, what I, what I call it lazy because I didn't separate it. That really is Dr. McDougal style right there. But love Chef AJ Style more than anything. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you. It was quite such an honor to be invited. I, ca I can't believe it. it's one of those things just pinch me. Oh, so, so what, thanks. what's your, what's your last words, parting words for, for women that are, or even men that are watching that have been struggling with their weight for so long? What would you say to them? Eat lots of potatoes, <laughs> <laughs> eat lots of potatoes, find, find that non-starchy vegetable that you love and eat it, eat it, eat those two pounds of potatoes or those two pounds of non-starchy veggies first. I would say get to bed earlier, you know, like around 10 o'clock, try to be in bed, don't eat after six, um, try a little bit of intermittent fasting. There's some people that, you know, they kind of get stuck. They just say, I can't lose the weight. I can't lose the weight. Try just a little bit of intermittent fasting, meaning you just wait, wait until 11 or two o'clock just to start. And you'll notice a difference because if you give yourself that window there, it does help break those addictions uh, as the bad habits, in other words, of eating later and you'll feel rewarded. Find somebody else that will challenge you. I don't know, I, well, maybe it's just me. I like a little competition. So, so when someone else came up and said they wanted to lose the weight, of course I wanted to get there first. And so that kind of helped drive me to stick to it because um, I was, I'm just, I don't know, I wanted to win and I won. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thanks I, again so much but, for being here. And thanks all of you guys for watching. Please come back tomorrow to learn how to date during the pandemic. And thank you for the wonderful thank recipe, Lori. Thank you, Chef AJ. <laughs> Bye-bye.